If you had $10,000 in spare cash, how would you invest it right now? So here's the big picture before you consider your options. US markets have had a strong first half of the year. Investors remain bullish on AI in particular. In Singapore, stocks have seen their best rally in years led by the big banks. So Chin, there are stocks, there are bonds and there are ETFs. With these different asset classes in mind, how do we divide that $10,000? If you think of it as a pyramid, the bulk of it at the bottom, around 60%, I'll keep it in fairly conservative investments. So this could be bonds or this could be ETFs which track indexes. The second layer, which is 30%, I would allow myself to seek a bit of growth. So it could be in stocks or even dividend stocks which are able to grow their dividends over time. And right at the tip, the remaining 10%, if you want, right, you don't have to do it, but if you want, you can pursue a bit of speculative investment. For the first six months of 2024, US stocks have been on a tear. The S&P 500 index has risen by 14.5%. So, can what goes up continue to go up? Historically, the market does correct 10%, meaning that the, from its high, it will fall by about 10%, roughly about once every two years. That's historical numbers. It can go many years without falling. So the, the truth is no one knows when that, that is going to happen. And instead of worrying where the market is going to go, come up with a list of stocks which you want to buy. Uh, you can either buy a little right now and wait for better prices to come along before you buy again. So when it comes to the sectors in the US, which specific ones should I be looking at? I think right now AI is a big growth sector. It's coming to a stage where they're trying to prove the business model for this new trend, cloud computing, for example. I think that could also benefit from the growth of uh, AI. I think semiconductors is another area where it could indirectly benefit from uh, the growth of AI as well. Are you looking at names like NVIDIA or any of the Mag7, for example? Among the Magnificent 7, I would point out Meta platforms and they have demonstrated that they are able to tap on AI to come up with a business which is worth $10 billion in revenue run rate. And it uses the AI, generative AI capability in the right way, where it's able to actually make their ads better, right? So ETFs, they're great for new investors and those who, like me, uh, want a hands-off approach, they want to think about too many things. Uh, what kind of ETFs should I be looking at? The main ETFs I would look at are index ETFs. These are ETFs which track an index, for example, the S&P 500, and uh, basically hold whatever the S&P 500 is having right now. So the S&P 500 is an index which encompasses 500 companies in the US, and these 500 companies represent about 80% of the US stock market. So what you get for a very low sum of money is that instant diversification to 500 different companies. Just like the US markets, Singapore stocks have been edging higher. In the first six months of 2024, total returns on the STI when you add in dividends rose to 5.7%. One of the areas where we are looking at right now are REITs or Real Estate Investment Trusts. They have been beaten down because of a high interest rate. Uh, but then I, I think that when things are uncertain, it's also a good time to pick up some of these companies, especially the ones with really strong sponsors, uh, which are performing well, despite all these pressures which they're facing from uh, interest rates and so on. In general, I think in Singapore, what you want to focus on are dividends. And that's because dividends are untaxed in Singapore. So whatever the, the company gives out, you, you get to keep, which I, I think is a great deal. Once you are ready to invest, allocate your funds according to your short-term and long-term financial goals. Bonds typically have a duration, and some of them might be six months, some of them could be 10 years, some of them could be one year. So uh, within that six months, you're going to get all your money back, and then you have to reinvest that into the next uh, you know, cash of uh, bonds and so on. But for stocks and ETFs, 
uh, and when I say ETFs, I mean ETFs which are linked to indexes, I, I would consider a minimum five-year period for holding because you do not know what's going to happen in the short term and statistics show that the longer you hold, the, the better your chances are to actually generate positive returns. So if you are new to investing, completely new, what is your number one rule of thumb? People get too excited, they, they saved up all this money, it took a lot of effort and they see an opportunity, they, they do not want to miss out and then they just pour everything into that, that uh, one idea or one stock or one investment. And I, w I would say really take a step back, think about what you want to do or achieve with that money. And as a rule of thumb, if you took two years to save up that money, then take at least a year to invest it. And of course, before jumping in headfirst into the world of investing, make sure you have enough for a rainy day. So for emergency funds, it could range from six months to 12 months. It also could depend on the person's circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a retiree, for example, I don't see anything wrong putting aside you know, five years of emergency funds. That five years of money is not money you should be investing anyway. So those were really great insights from Chin. Now, if I had $10,000 in spare cash, I think I'll consider putting it in a tech ETF so that I can be part of the AI race.